All right, guys, today I want to talk to you about Moses and the HOA. I know that might sound kind of peculiar. You might be wondering, what does Moses have to do with a homeowner's association? Maybe a little more than you might think. You, you could be a bit surprised. So I, uh, we live, our family lives in this uh, nice community that was just, you know, it's a brand new community, basically. It's only a couple years old, and we were the first house in there. And um, the HOA, uh, while it's always been in effect since it's been started, um, it, it really only started ramping up about December of last year, um, you know, in, a, in an organized fashion. And we went to the first meeting there. It was interesting. I've never been to an HOA meeting before, and and I would have never thought that I could describe it as interesting. But, I mean, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't bad. I guess this is what I mean. And so last night we went for the second time. We've only had two meetings. We've been to both of them. And, and in the meantime, there's been a lot of issues that have cropped up in the neighborhood because mostly we think that it's because there's a percentage of the homes in there that are rentals, okay? And so you're always gonna have that that um, that small group of people that are just, you know, they just don't care as much as the homeowners do. You know, that's just how it is. I don't even really have to explain that. But we've had some issues. I mean, legitimate issues with, with uh, you know, where people are parking their cars, you know, um, all sorts of things. And it's a matter of respect. Or a, or a lack of respect is what it comes down to. Well, our group has a, our, our neighborhood has a, um, a Facebook page. There's always complaints on there, and they're legitimate complaints. And and so people have been, you know, they've been marinating on these things for a while. And my wife and I were saying, it's going to be interesting when we go to listen to people gripe and hear what they have to say. And um, me, I just... I, I, I stay out of it unless I really have something worth saying and if I think it'll make a difference so I just kind of keep my mouth shut and observe and uh, we kind of came in late so we sat near the back and so we were able to observe even more acutely well uh, there were other things that are brought up on uh, up, up for discussion besides you know just where people park all sorts of things and here's what I've discovered, that there are certain things that just never change when you get people in a group. There's just certain things that come with that by default. Uh, when you gather people together, they're always going to find camaraderie and constituency by way of griping and complaining. It becomes the bonding agent among a group of people. And, and I've, I've seen that my entire life. And and what's funny is, is on Facebook, what you hear people saying all the time, and they echo it there at the meeting, is, well, we just want everybody to be friends. We want... We want to we want to cultivate the spirit of community, and we want everybody to be friendly and nice, and and you know, and they, and when you when you see the activity on the buzz on on social media, it's always about we should get together and do this and do that, and and co everybody come together and oh, it's so beautiful. Well, it's only the women that are doing that. You know, men men have never been the social engineers. Uh, they just haven't. It's, it's never, it, it, women are just good at that. That's just kind of how they're built. That's how, kind of how God made them. And so I'm not harping on them for that. But here's my take in all of it, is that I don't need to get together with a bunch of people, you know, in their driveway or in their home and, and to, to, to be respectful, to be a respectful neighbor, to be a kind neighbor. I don't need to be friends with you. And, and while that might sound cynical or a little bit harsh, my experience has been when neighbors feel like that you're now friends, they just take advantage of you because you're really just neighbors and they, they want to act like, and I even use the words, they want to act like we're one big family. Well, some families are pretty toxic. Some families always go at each other's throat. They take advantage, they, they really, you know, take a lot of advantage of each other. And that's what I've experienced anywhere I've, I've ever gone where I've tried to be really nice with my neighbors is that um, 
they just they look for the chink in the armor. So I'm not I'm not against making friends, but I'm not going to force it just because we live in the same community, you see? Because really not that many people have that much in common with each other. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors that come into play, a lot of nuanced um things that have to occur for us to be real friends. Okay? I'm not going to do it so that I feel secure in the neighborhood. All right? And so anyway, here's here's the other part of this. So we get there and and people hear one thing they don't like and then you see the the constant um uh condescending looks that people give each other about what is being said from the very front, okay? That the pitch that's being um, put out there, you know, it, things that issues that need to be raised, like the cost of uh, the cost of an application for uh, mo uh, modifications to whatever, and, and they're nominal, they're nominal, but but people get very upset. Here's the thing: uh, I think what I've what I've learned throughout my life is that people. When they get together with others, they are looking for something negative to bond over because that's the only thing they, it's the only way they know how. And so I think they actually, to some degree, enjoy, even though they say they're upset and they act like they're upset. And I don't really want any part of it. This is why I don't even want to pretend that I'm friends with neighbors if I'm not really their friend. I can be friendly, I can be respectful. But I don't have to play that game, okay? And so, what? But here's here's my point. These very same people try to come off as the nicest people in the world until they get into a group, and as soon as they sense that somebody else doesn't like something, you can see the the sideways glances, and then the actual eye contact, and then oh yeah, see we agree on this, and um, and now we have a bond. And that's really all the further it goes, but they believe it to be stronger than what it is. And I guarantee you it wouldn't take much to put these people at each other's throats. And so as I'm watching this, and I'm and I'm watching the tension build, and it was it was abated, you know, it was mitigated, uh, because the uh, the HOA president did a very good job of handling it. He's a yeah, he's actually, he's actually a, a friend of our family, uh, him and his wife. Uh, he does he did such an excellent job of handling it. And uh, so anyway. I, I was sitting there and I told my wife, I said, can you imagine, this is just a microcosm of what Moses had to deal with with the Israelites in the wilderness. Can you imagine what, you know, getting millions of people together who are basically a community and uh, and they're they're all neighbors because they're, you know, they've, out, they've left Egypt because they they really needed to. They needed their freedom. They need, they need to be able to worship the one true God. I mean, that sounds pretty noble, right? That sounds pretty righteous. But they get out there in the wilderness and things don't always go according to plan. Things very rarely ever go right. Right? What was any different with them? And the Israelites were well known for being whiny and, and huge complainers. And Moses... You know, he he had his he had his tipping point, and he he would crack, and he would, he would lose his temper, and he even set up a judiciary system because he was like, I I can't I can't be the only one judging all of you when there's when there's infractions uh, with with each other that you feel like they've committed. I need to appoint other judges, and and that that occurred there. He did that. He was a good leader, but he had his tipping point, and he he lost it several times, several times. One crucial time is when God told him to uh, speak to a rock to, because he was going to issue water out of it for the thirsty children of Israel. Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck it in anger. Well, the rock, well, there's a whole lot of symbolism that was going on there. It was a very serious moment, and, and, and Moses blew it because he was tired of these people. And um, he struck the rock instead. Water still came out. And, um, but because of his disobedience, God wouldn't let him go to the promised land. And, and I just think to myself, man, you know, when, <laughs> you know, I guess if I was Moses's friend, if he had real friends, I'd be like, 
listen, God, can we talk? Because I know, listen, I, I, God wouldn't listen to me if I was in that position. I'd probably get myself in trouble. But I, that's this is what I'm thinking. After after what four thousand years, God, could we talk? Because Moses, you know, he's a pretty good guy. I don't think he really meant it. He was having a weak moment. He 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 crossed that threshold. I know, but maybe instead of hitting the rock, maybe he should have been hitting the sauce because he's. It wouldn't have been Bud Light that I can that I can tell you for sure, uh, but um, no, I don't mean to sound sacrilegious. I don't mean that at all whatsoever. But I, I look at that and I go, I can relate to Moses, and and his whine, his his frustration with the whining and the complaining of the children of Israel when he was doing everything he could to lead them well, he just couldn't seem to catch a break, and. Um, I don't really know. I didn't really start off this video with an end goal, with a with a, a conclusion in mind. But as I'm talking it out, I'm thinking to myself, maybe this is it. Consider when you when you have someone to petition, and you have people to live with and people to live around. Be careful about your whining and your complaining and how it can grate on people's nerves. And consider the people that are trying to lead you. Some people just have a real problem with authority. Oh, there's the ambi there's the sirens. People, some people have a real problem with authority, and they won't give them a break because they they feel like they just have to. They just have to rub against the grain. But keep in mind, there are actually a lot of people out there who are leading, who are doing it because they care, and they want to take you to the promised land, whatever that is in your life. Don't make it hard for them. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe the only the other thing to add to this is be neighborly. But don't try to force your friendship on people. <laughs> don't try to force your friendship on people that uh, uh, just to prove that you are kind, just be kind. Don't try to get together to show how respectful and how good you are. Just be respectful and be good. Just do that. Just do that. Stop your fussing. Yeah, that's it. That's that's good, right? I mean, that's I guess that's a good way to end the video. I think I've made my point. Anyway, man, it's thundering. About to get rained on. I have to go donate plasma at BioLife, but I do thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it if you hit the like if you hit the like button and subscribe. If you see that little bell down below, hit that also. And share this with somebody. I know you're thinking of somebody right now, aren't you? Yeah, that that fuss budget that I never know when to shut their mouth. You might want to send this to them. But then again, they're gonna know why you did, right? Alright, so. Alright. I will catch you guys later. I've enjoyed it. Have a great night. And be wise.